Hungary and Poland are both blocking the new European Union seven-year budget and the EU's coronavirus recovery package. It's over the rule of law mechanism. Many Western politicians were surprised as they thought that these two countries would have much to lose as any other member state. But when you look at the 2020 projected GDP growth and the government deficit, or the gross government debt, we can see that these two countries are in a more stable position than some of the other European counterparts. Hungary has also amassed a huge reserve in foreign currency and, in the days before the veto, it successfully issued a 2.5 billion euros worth of government bonds on the international market. Due to these factors, in my opinion, even in a deep recession and with the uncertainty concerning the EU funds, the Hungarian budget is in a stable position. I don't see any vulnerability that would make it possible to blackmail or break the will of the Hungarian government, as their narrative states. All in all, I can't see the possibility to pressure the Hungarian government enough to sign an agreement that it does not want to sign. The only sign of nervousness on the Hungarian markets was a small rush to exchange the Hungarian currency to euro, dollar and gold. But it turned out it was not a reaction to the veto, but to a brief hike in the exchange rate of the foreign. It's true, the foreign grew stronger compared to the euro. You could buy one euro for around 355 foreigns, which is horribly high price when you compare it to previous years. But this year, it is quite good. So a lot of people started to buy dollars or euros. That led to a small explosion. Our reserve ran low, but it lasted only for a few days. A lot of people wondered if calling Viktor Orban's bluff would be enough to end a stalemate around the EU budget. However, it seems the Hungarian government is prepared for a long tug of war and, at the same time, Hungarians are not really worried about the economic consequences, as of now. Jay Marquez, Euro News. A veto is always a very difficult thing to uh, to overcome. Uh, the EU has been used to that to it, it, it but uh, a summit as we are having tonight, it, you know, it's a virtual summit. So, and this uh, the, to have a very sensitive issue uh, and political issue that, like the rule of law, it's difficult to really deal it uh, just through a, a one night of virtual summit. So, it will probably take some days before we get uh, we find a solution. Uh, the, the, your the reporter was right to point out that this actually is not a, a really completely new issue. There is a, this, um, uh, those two countries, Poland uh, and Hungary, feel really uh, pointed uh, and, and believe that they are being discriminated against. And they, they, they're making a point that there is the, the rule of law actually is, is more a political fight against their own ideology. And they want to, to I think, to raise a point there. But there is a very strong weakness in their position in that actually they need this money uh, and they are harming their own citizens if they don't get it. And the fact that uh, uh, France and other countries are uh, perhaps uh, suggesting we could make a separate treaty or uh, find a solution just uh, with the 25 countries uh, that really uh, will want to uphold to, to the rule of law uh, is, is a real threat to them if they don't really get those, those uh, billions of euros mm. that can be expected. So you mentioned France and uh, the Netherlands have got one potential option as well. But for the other member states wanting to secure that coronavirus recovery fund for their own citizens and for their own countries, what options do they actually have? Well, the, the option of doing a separate treaty with 25 is really the, the last option we want to get to. Uh, and the German presidency, uh, Angela Merkel, uh, who is, as you know, running the, the, the Council of the EU uh, right this semester, uh, once I think goes to the diplomatic uh, channel and try to find perhaps some declaration that could be uh, uh, added to this uh, agreement where uh, Poland and Hungary would be reassured that there would be no arbitrary uh, 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 using of this uh, new instrument. It's true, it's the first time that we are conditioning uh, the respect of the rule of law to uh, having, uh, enjoying uh, uh, benefits of the EU budget. So it, it's, a new, it's a new procedure. But the, uh, I'm confident that uh, the German presidency, will, which really has made this uh, this uh, recovery plan, the priority uh, for the EU, uh, wants to find a diplomatic uh, solution with 
uh, Hungary uh, and Poland. Remember that Hungary belonged to Viktor Orban, belonged to the same political family as uh, Angela Merkel, the, the European Popular Party, the EPP. And so, uh, and, and also Hungary and Poland uh, see that uh, as part of Slovenia, there have been many, part many more partners. Uh, uh, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Austria, they are not uh, at all uh, with them on, on this issue. So I think uh, they, they can find some solution uh, on a diplomatic uh, way. So certainly Angela Merkel is going to be looking at pursuing that. But from the perspective of Hungary and Poland, what's their game plan here? What's their strategy? Because if they scupper this for everyone, they scupper it for themselves too. It's a very good point. And actually, uh, one may wonder uh, why they are doing this. And uh, uh, even last week, we all thought they were, they were just bluffing, that they wouldn't really do it because uh, they, they, this is raising even uh, 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 harm uh, among their citizens. We know that in Poland, the majority of the ruling party is very narrow. Uh, there are six parties in Hungary that have uh, really now opposing uh, uh, Mr. Orban in Hungary to uh, on this, and citizens may not uh, may feel that their own uh, government is not uh, protecting them. So uh, it's it, uh, I'm not sure how far they can go on this track, but they really want to show that they have their own alternative view on the rule of law. And even if we find some declaration or some way of getting through this, the fundamental question, this almost cultural war that is behind this, will have to will take more time to really uh, and need more dialogue between uh, those countries and, and, and the rest of the EU.